Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Sense. Welcome to another video. This time I'm with my good friend Alex. Hey Forum. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> you had to. <laughs> so, this is another Alex who's on my channel because there's three of you now, so that's really exciting. But here we're going to talk about some fragrances that are near and dear to your heart because you're a woman. <laughs> I, I am a woman. <laughs> and of course, this fragrance video is on women's fragrances that I actually own and wear. And I support this. I think Manny does women's fragrances very well. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And I'm of the belief that if something smells good, you don't necessarily have to live by its marketed gender. Or even if you want to and they evoke thoughts of femininity and you're remotely into that, don't shame yourself into thinking that you don't want that either. I mean, I think a lot of niche now appears to be more unisex, maybe more than it used to be. Um, I like when people gender bend with fragrances. I definitely wear a lot of men's fragrances. I don't know, I'm noticing like men's scents are leaning a bit towards the sweeter in the past few years, which I think has typically been more in women's fragrance and even some kind of gourmandy things on the men's side right now. I like to see men in florals and non-traditional genres like, I mean, I like aldehydes on a guy, and so I know you like your Chanel's. Like, okay. if you're gonna freak people out, then whatever, that's on them. <laughs> right. Of course, she is not too conscious of me doing this because she's also into fragrances. So, nonetheless, I hope you enjoy this. And when I said that these fragrances are near and dear to your heart, uh, you don't know what I'm about to pick for you, but I'm sure these will be some that you actually recognize. Okay. All right, so here's the first one. Alex is going to rate this from one to 10. I hate doing the blind sniffs. <laughs> okay, this smells like a Chanel already, and I, I hope it is. Guilty. Yeah, this is really gorgeous. This is a really soft, like there is aldehydes, it's Chanel. Feels like it could be a citrusy, slightly floral white musk. I don't know if I own this. I feel bad for not knowing. I think you own it in some way, shape or form if you don't yeah. own it. Yeah, it smells like a variant on number five, but not the one that I own, so I'm... What, what, what am I smelling here? I have to rate it. I would love to smell this on a guy, honestly. I mean, I don't know how many guys would wear it. It seems a little, like, maybe outside their comfort zone, but mm -hmm. it's just so... Um, I don't know, it's inviting, it's soft, it's friendly. It smells clean. I mean, aldehydes will do that. Okay. It's nice, like, it makes you want to give someone a hug. And out of ten. Out of ten? Mm, this is so good, I just love Chanel's. I'll be conservative and I'll give it an eight. Okay, okay. But I would wear this. Like, this seems like a daily scent. What you are smelling is this right here. It's Numenal Saint Cologne. Oh, okay. So it is the variant I've never smelled. Yes, and just because it's in the two years ago holiday bottle does not mean that this stuff smells any different than any other low bottles because it's, again, just the same. That being said, you have a less imposing take on Numenal Saint and a little bit more of a powdery, watery way, which I think is really pretty. Uh, other than that, you're getting classic Chanel notes, like those aldehydes. Mm -hmm. just feels like it's popping in your nose in a rather sparkly way that I don't necessarily think is evocative of straight up femininity as well. So just because this is advertised towards women, I actually know quite a few fragrance enthusiasts that say that this is tolerable mm -hmm. because you have a lot of guys nowadays who are like kind of apprehensive of course of women's fragrances and even women's fragrances on women you know new metal sank might be a little bit too powerful right but this is something that i would definitely consider getting for a loved one if they want something traditional but also modern at the same time it's quite a bit greener than the the original and it's quite a bit greener than au premier which yeah. i do own less vanilla as well so maybe Maybe guys might like that. I don't know. It's a lot fresher. But I'm glad you like this. Eight out of ten. Yeah, I rate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this one was nice. Hey. Bruh. <laughs> She's going to steal my bottle. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will. I... Next up. Okay. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this one. This one has a vintage -y feel. I don't know what florals I'm getting, maybe some rose. I'm getting this waxy quality. I know I say I smell beeswax in a lot of scents, but it's like it's a note that I really like. Oh, okay. I really don't know what to make of this one. It does have a powdery musky quality. Cool. It's reminding me of some um, rose musk combinations from an indie brand that I used to like. Okay. So like a touch animalic, 
But again, it's the really vintage -y vibe that I find interesting. That doesn't smell contemporary to you? It smells like a contemporary take on a vintage-y theme. Okay. I actually think it makes a whole lot of sense. It's like, it smells like you should wear this to a really, really nice library with wood paneling. <laughs> wow. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I know, you can't go to the library now. What is this one? Okay. First off, mm. do you like it? Would you like this off me? Would you like this off a guy? Would you like this off yourself? I'm getting a bit of booziness too. I would wear this. The thing is, like most of the things I like on myself, I would like on a guy. Besides, like I don't really like super sweet gourmands on a guy, but I think, again, I would be like kind of pleasantly surprised to smell something like this on a guy. I would think that he was, well, like unique for sure. Okay. Would he be classier or? Yes, this is a classier gent. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> okay, what is it? Okay, out of 10. It's really gorgeous. I'm gonna give it a seven because I feel like it's slightly less like universal, like less accessible than the last one. Okay. So the one we're talking about is by Italie Grange. This is Putain de Palace. <laughs> of course. And okay. you're out here saying like this would be classy in the library no, and whatnot. No, it's not. <laughs> this actually translates in English to something along the lines of hotel whore. So. <laughs> I think that's cool. It's supposed to smell like a classy call girl type. And for whatever reason, I think that's sexy. And I'm like, hmm, I wouldn't mind that on me. I know, <laughs> I know you like this one. Yeah. It smells different than the last time I tested it. Uh, I like it a lot better, actually, than what I remember. Cool, cool. So we're getting uh, powdery notes. Uh, it's going to come off as slightly musky off of your skin, like you mentioned. You were getting something further more floral, which uh, I think is true. But over time, if you were to wear this on your skin, you're going to get a nice leathery backbone as well. Mm -hmm. Something that just feels, again, like you said, vintage. Powdery, leathery, but done in a sexy contemporary way like a fucking high class call girl that's a swear on this channel i mean i might censor it i don't know okay yeah putanda palace seven out of ten all right moving on to the next one here we go okay damn it i know that i have this one so i'm gonna be again ashamed if i don't guess it do you actually have this no but this is uh this is a mal isn't it it is this is a big rose this is like a, a huge rose Hopefully it is. I don't, again, don't want to embarrass myself. It smells like a rose that's been partially cooked. Like mm. it has that, so I guess that would be a jammy quality. There's some fruitiness, there's some earthiness. It feels like a very unisex rose. It's not a traditionally feminine or, or even like a dandy rose. I totally agree with this. It's deep. Yeah, it's not like a pretty pink rose. This is like a deep red rose that you've cooked down with the stem and the leaves and a little bit of dirt. All right. But it's nice. I like the fruitiness a lot. It's it's still approachable. It's not like an angry, scary rose. And out of 10. These are so nice. I'm, I don't like rating them, though. I'll give this one an 8. And I don't normally like rose. You know what? You don't. Yeah. I'm getting more into it now. Okay. Well, I hope this one helps then. I can see why this would work as a masculine rose. I would, again, tenfold agree. So she's not wrong. Good lord. Again. <laughs> I knew this one. Yes, it is a mal. This is my vintage un rose. Ooh. It's supposed to smell more like a rose, you know, outside. I feel like it's, you know, you're at a garden. Uh, you also get fruitiness from whatever else you might be smelling. I think wine dregs is also advertised mm -hmm. as a note here. So there's a slight fruity, intoxicating quality about it. But nothing that screams furthermore feminine. Like you see rose paired with maybe vanilla maybe oud, maybe patchouli, and some of those are more voluptuous in, you know, a way that isn't remotely masculine. Mm -hmm. And this isn't remotely masculine either, but it doesn't feel as feminine. Like, I don't picture a girl in a dress when I smell something like this. Yeah, and you know what? So many guys and people in general are wearing rose oud combinations. I feel like might as well branch out. Get to know the rose. Hey, hey, that's what's up. Oud rose, eight out of 10. All right, moving on to the next one. There we go. Again, it's something I feel like I own. I've just smelled it before. Mm. I think you might be surprised at this one. So it's reminding me of some of the scents I own that are like slightly gourmand orange blossom scents. Because it has that marshmallow quality, that like dry, like if you dehydrated a marshmallow uh, that Killian Love has, which I think is a really fun uh, note. I like it for me. Okay. I would wear this one. Not so much on a guy. This would be more of a stretch. This is like, if you're like a cute twinky guy, <laughs> if you're going out of the town, like you're looking really cute, you're like maybe wearing some glitter. Are you trying to imply something on me? No, <laughs> I didn't know that you were. <laughs> I didn't know you wore this one. 
but it's really friendly like it's sweet uh like literally and it just feels sweet but okay out of 10 i'm giving it a 6.5 only because in my opinion there's like less versatility for guys is that bad no it's not no i get it totally okay. but again i would wear it for myself i would give it a 7.5 Okay, so we'll call it a seven. We'll call it a seven. Okay. All right. So the one we're talking about is Metallique by Tom Ford. Oh. Yeah. So what's cool about this scent is that it has a throwback vibe to it in a way that is aldehydic. So if there's a freshness out there, you mentioned something, you know, like orange blossom. There's actually a brightness off the opening, say if I were to spray that again right away. Hmm. Now, when that dries down, you still get remnants of it, but you're getting this like really modern vanilla vibe. Mm -hmm. It almost smells like a marshmallow, kind of like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. The vanilla here smells so soft. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't smell like deep vanilla root or anything no. like that. No. It smells like a candy of some sort. Yeah. Uh, again, this is something that you're going to want off of your partner, you know, if she's a girl. Uh, but off of me, like, this is something that admittedly is not completely my taste. You'd figure, yeah, I like vanillas, but typically I like deeper ones. You figure I like aldehydes. Typically I like stuff that's more hell-bent on that fresher vintage DNA. Mm -hmm. Trying to combine them both, A for effort from Tom Ford. It's just not completely for me, but definitely worthy of trying out. Mm -hmm. So 7 out of 10, Metallique, Tom Ford. All right, moving on. Here we go with the next one. You're giving me all the, the vanillas today. Again, kind of a floral vanilla. This one has like a lightness and a transparency about it. It's not a heavy, deep, syrupy type of vanilla. I don't know what else I'm getting. Like how floral is that then? Mildly floral. Like, I don't know if I wouldn't be surprised if there was a bit of iris in there or... Something powdery that keeps the vanilla in check, if that makes any sense? The vanilla is kept in check. Yes, it's okay. like a subdued. Because what I feel with that scent, it's a really intense projection, but like mm. not, not that far. Yeah. Would that smell weird on a guy? No. I think a guy could pull this one off. I definitely think so too. Yeah. Like it's not woody, but it has soft transparent woods kind of scents. If you're into soft sandal woods. Yeah. Again, it has a slightly candied quality. Again, I mean, you know, vanilla is sweet, but yeah, I think this one is would be nice on a guy, actually. I would wear that one. Out of 10. We'll do an eight for that one. So the one we're talking about is this. It's Orchide Vanille from Van Cleef and Arpels. I think this is the all-star out of older scents there. And you might think a deep floral vanilla, but it is kind of innocent in how it doesn't feel like it's too imposing. They actually already have a black orchid clone in that line called Precious Oud. This is definitely different from that black orchid DNA style. So we're talking basically a little bit of citrus floral uh, along with other florals meant to smell like an orchid, but mm. you're also getting a vanilla that is way softer and you're not getting, again, like yeah. a deep patchouli vibe or anything like that. Everything about this is supposed to smell perfect skin scent is how I would define it. And off of a woman, I think it's incredible. But again, sometimes I like that vibe for myself. Mm -hmm. So if you like stuff like Angelique Noir, I think. Yeah, that would be a good companion to that. Yeah, I mean, this is something that's a little bit more approachable that I don't think you would hate either. It's like, it's a good veil scent. Yes. And I don't know if orchid, orchid vanilla is a type of vanilla. I, f I feel like it's referenced a lot. Mm. Whatever it is, if it exists, it's not the like dark kind of fermented vanilla bean type right. of vanilla. It's not that kind of boozy, deep, uh, like dried fruit type of vanilla. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, alrighty. So eight out of 10. Alrighty for them, here we go with the last one on the list. This one's a little crazy. Is it? Yeah, in a good way. It's a crazy for like a guy? It's crazy for a girl too. It's just something really unique going on here. Mm, okay. It almost feels a bit fruity tropical, but in a super wacky way. It's just something I'm not used to. Okay. I guess I'll find out what it is. It kind of feels like a fruity floral, but in a non-traditional way. Correct. In a way that's like wearable for a guy or a girl who hates fruity florals. Mm. Like like me, I don't really like them, but. Okay. <laughs> what would you wear that to? Or what would someone wear that to? Mm, summer nights. I'm like, this is a big summer night vibe. I don't disagree with that. But it's cuddly too. Like, yeah, it's really unique. What is this? Well, firstly, out of 10, what is that? I'm giving it a seven because I feel, again, it's not quite as like versatile okay. because it's so like interesting, but it's like objectively kind of sick. So the one we are talking about is this guy right here. It's Nightingale from Zoologist Perfumes. Oh. And I think this is currently advertised as 
unisex right now. Forgive me if I'm wrong though, Victor Wong, I think you initially did advertise this as feminine. Regardless, I wear it. I love it. I think it's dope. When it comes to something like this, I feel like it's such a beast off of me mm -hmm. that like I really don't need more than a couple sprays. But we're getting a lot of what it's based on and that is Japanese Plum Blossom, which is really cool. So the Plum Blossom Festival, which is absolutely gorgeous. And then we're thinking of all oh, the woods in the background as well. It reminds me of like a dried salted plum a little bit too. Mm. Yeah, and I, I, I see what you mean by that. That's a fun one. It's like tangy. Yeah, I would definitely describe this as tangy. It is a little wacky, like you said. Well, zoologist is good for that. Yeah, good for the shenanigans and you know breaking <laughs> the norms of what perfume has traditionally been. Uh, but to see it in right here and me actually wearing it in the context of this video, yeah, don't be afraid to not only wear, again, feminine scents, but stuff that is different. That being said, we have a three-way tie for the winner for this Lots of women's fragrance video I actually wear. And honestly, I don't hate any of this remotely. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely get down with why these are all eights for you. That being said, if you had to pick one, which one is it? <sighs> Different types of guys. I would love to see guys going for number five low. Oh, so you're telling me that this is probably the most flattering on a guy. Yeah, I think it's super versatile. Pretty universal appeal. Kind of all season, too. Definitely a signature because to me, New Metal Sink, I think you can just rock any time. Less brace in the summer, more when it gets cool out. Uh, but with this right here, you don't have to worry remotely about, again, just being too explosive for whoever you're with. It's just such a nice, wow, this person's really cool to be around kind of scent. Yeah, it is. It seems like a nice person scent. Yes. Like you, you kind of want to get to know that person. It's like yeah. a good trustworthy scent. I would say this person is trustworthy. And Absolutely. I guess my choice works with my agenda of getting men to wear more aldehydes. So. Ah, uh, okay. So. Do it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's literally watery, number five, little bit of powderiness that doesn't go too effeminate. At the same time, it's just, like you said, it smells like a nice person. Great signature if you are the type to be a little bit more smart, casual with your attire, mm -hmm. if you carry yourself in a way that isn't too fuckboyish. <laughs> it's not a fuckboy scent. Yes. But you don't want that. Exactly, and that's uh, what this isn't, so love it. So what did you think of some of these womanly scents that I actually possess and actually wear from time to time? I support it. I like what you do with your your like unisex and your feminine scents. I think you pull them off really well. Cool. And I like to steal them. So it's good. I would wear most of these, if not all of them. Oh. So you heard it first. If you guys enjoyed what Alex had to say about all of these scents, let us know in the comment section below if you guys want to tell her that you want to see her back on the channel. I'm sure we would both appreciate it. But yeah, uh, do you have anything else you want to say? <laughs> Where are your fragrances? Oh my god. <laughs> Other than that, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to as well. If you want to get inundated with this kind of content ASAP, please do so. And yeah, be safe out there. It's hard out here for a G. And I guess I'll see you soon. So thanks again for watching. My name is Manny. Where are your fragrances?